Sorry about that. There's only one of you here so far. I'll just uh, do a set or two here while we're waiting for people to show up. My my battery died. <coughs> my battery died in my computer, so that's what happened. That's why you guys all got kicked. Yeah, I, knew, I was down to 1%, and I had to run out of the room right away. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I couldn't get the cord fast enough. Some of you are here, back. some of you are back. Uh, 28 back. Did get everybody back yet? Okay. 17 back. Oh, round two, yeah. Yeah, no, it wasn't you guys. It was just uh, basically my cord died, or my, my computer battery died, so that's why I lost you. So, yeah. Hey there, Surya. How you doing, brother? Yeah. Oh, good. Kung Fu's back, too. Good. Okay, cool. I mean, I only got 19 back. I lost a bunch of people now. Oh, what happens, eh? Shit. Oh, what do you do, right? What do you do? You try your best, and this is what happens. So hopefully uh, other people, but maybe other people aren't getting the notifications, so maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. But, yeah, battery died. I keep on thinking my chat's going to be uh, short enough that my battery will last, because I was online for quite a while there. But usually... I think, okay, I'll get off in a couple hours or something. Then I end up being on here way longer, so sorry about that. Um, okay, Bruce Bonson, uh, maybe you should do the laying down tricep extension like you instead of, well, there's different ways to do it, Bruce. Like each movement is different, right? So just because you do the lying down extension, that doesn't mean it's a replacement or exactly the same as over the head. It's not, it's different. But the one thing people do is that they do too much weight over the head, and over the head is a lot harder on the elbows. So you want to make sure that you stick to higher rep ranges with that. Don't be doing five rep sets with that. That'll kill your elbows for sure. MBF off grid. How you doing, brother? Kung Fu, I'll never lose you. Thanks, man. It's good to have one friend in this world. I'll tell you. I lost enough other people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Ail Ren, how you doing there, buddy? Sup, dude? Sup, dude? Sup, dude? <laughs> All right. I'm just doing a couple sets here of triceps while I talk to you guys. Let's wait till everybody gets back. Okay. Back is tight. Oh, I'm sitting in that chair and doing bent over rows. See, that's what you don't do. Yeah, the overhead is brutal. The overhead tricep extension is brutal. If you do it heavy, it's, it's just absolutely bull bullshit. But I'll do some overhead here, and I'll show you what I'm doing. So you'll see. Uh, okay. Uh, Winter narrow, you can never find a tricep exercise that feels good. Uh, all of it feels awkward, so I stick to cable or CGBP. Fuck, man, I hate it when you guys use, use letters because you're too lazy to type. You're too lazy to type what you mean, and then I'm sitting here trying to decipher with the Rosetta Stone what the fuck you're talking about, like uh, like in the Egyptian pyramids or some shit. Like, just put what you mean in a freaking comment. Give me some goddamn context if you want me to answer and help you out. Damn. We need clear communication here. I need a counselor. You guys to basically open up your communication. Let me know what the hell you're saying. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, changing rep ranges, uh, Gavin, 100% will give you way more, way more results. Um, that's good. Close grip bench press. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Screw the abbreviations, man. I don't like it. I don't like having to figure it out what the hell you guys are saying. So thanks. So now I got to scroll up now 
to this dude, Nira. What was he saying? Okay. What were you saying again, Nira? Let me see what you're saying. Can you see my problem here? I can never find a tricep exercise that feels good to me. All that feels awkward, so I stick to. Okay, close grip bench press. Okay, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, the close grip bench press will be different, but close grip is still good. But keep your elbows in and, you know, do cable press downs and stuff. Do different stuff like that. Do lighter weight. Try different rep ranges. Step away from the rack. Step close to the rack. Bring your elbows forward. Bring them back. Keep them forward. Do this. Bring them back. Do that. Do both as, as you're doing it. See if that helps. You know, these things all make a difference, right? Okay, boomer. JKRS, I could talk to you in a code that you wouldn't freaking understand whatsoever, and you would just be sitting there like, what's he saying? I don't understand. And you call me a boomer just because I'm asking people to just not use letters and actually say what they mean. You are ignorant. Posse cool stick. Posse, you are not a cool stick. I'm not an old man. And uh, yeah, you talk that big game there, buddy, because you're sitting behind a screen somewhere else in the world. So yeah, you keep talking to talk there, guy. Mr. No Profile Picture. All right there, sir. Yeah, been getting a lot of pain in my left elbow. I think it might've been where I broke and chipped a bone when I was younger. Tennis elbow, I wear a support. Yeah, that's that's possible. Sometimes you can, you can chip a bone there or whatever. Yeah, bones hurt sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes injuries in the past come back to haunt you and yeah. But a lot of times, it's usually you're doing something wrong too, right? So uh, let me just take it back. Let's roll this down so you can see a couple of things I'm doing here. Let me do some tricep here. See, this is the elbows above my head. But the mistake a lot of guys do is they say, I want to do a skull pressure. So then I'm going to do the elbows here, and then I'm going to do the to my forehead. And I'm going to do it this way. And I'm not saying you can't get some tricep work there, but it's going to be exponentially harder on the elbow. So I point the elbows towards the ceiling and bring the dumbbells in an arc. <laughs> elbows in an arc, not, not like this, you know? That's too hard on the elbows. Or can be, so. Watch that. <laughs> My hair's a dope, so totally not it. It's the weirdest thing on this channel. I get more hate and love for my hair. I've never had for anything in my life. <laughs> Thanks, though. Okay, question like, doing a size like squat leg press, bad by pushing off the toes, bad for the knees. Yes, does this also apply to training calves? No, because it's, it has to do with pressure in them. Jesus, it has to do with pressure, right? Your calves, let me just not fall down, do this, right? So how can pushing off the toes be an issue for calves? That doesn't even make sense. Now, if I push off the toes here, what am I doing? I'm lengthening this lever arm, so now I'm putting more stress on the knee. See, it's like the teeter-totter effect. You have a five pound guy sitting on that side and it's heavier than if he sits up close here, right? Heavier there, right? So under the same principle, by pushing the toe there, more stress on the knee. Not to mention the instability and the stress on the ligaments and all that kind of crap. So yeah, totally different. So of course you can push off the toes for calves. Of course, yeah, that's, that's, that's what calves are meant to do. I heard your hair gives you power. Well, uh, well, if I cut my hair, I'm gonna have a, an amazing amount of no power. So, cause I don't see I'm having a lot of power now. <laughs> yeah. Surely heavy weight for calves is better. No, I would say not necessarily. Um, again, I think it's a combination of both. I think you need heavy and light, but plyometrics seem to be best for calves along with some weight training. I find that's the best. But you don't want to do the plyometrics too aggressively because you'll tear an Achilles tendon. And that's definitely not what you want to do. <laughs> well, I'm at 40 people now. 40. Hey, guys, if you haven't shared this uh, live stream anywhere, share it up. Share it up on your chats or your Facebooks or where are your TikToks or whatever the hell you share stuff on. Share it up. Get some people on here, man. Get some people to realize there's such thing as the mountain. All right. How long does it take to grow hair that long? It took me about a year and a half, two years. A year and a half, I guess. 
Will staying below 10% body fat cause you to lose muscle or shrink eventually? Not sure if you made that video yet. I would say no, but it depends on the person's metabolism. Depends on what they have to do in order to stay under 10%. If they have to deplete their system like crazy to stay under 10%, I would say no. But then you see some guys that have super fast metabolism, so they're naturally at around 10% all the time. And it doesn't matter how much they eat, they're at 10%. So I would say as long as you're uh, nourishing the body, eating lots, uh, but lots of clean food, it's definitely possible. I stayed at, at around 10% most of my life. Uh, okay, GM, what would you recommend for forearms? Now, again, I don't train forearms, but I've got huge forearms, so I think it came from my grandpa, right? Uh, but, but the thing is, grip seems to really change the forearms. But one thing I will say is that doing hammer curls and stuff will, will definitely work the forearms quite a bit, uh, especially the extensors in the, in the forearms. Uh, hammer curls will definitely work. And uh, doing like wrist curls will actually help the other, other side of the forearm if you need to work there. So, yeah, that, that's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, maybe doing uh, grips like this too, like hanging grips might work. Uh, maybe doing a grip like this and then squeezing like this, like the bar in your hand, but then squeezing it down with weight resistance, that might help too. So try those things out. Uh, Devin, it's funny, you say you look like Thor. Yeah, you have no clue. You have no clue what you're tapping into there, Devin. No clue, man. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, sometimes I can tell you some pretty nutty stories. But sometimes I don't tell you the nutty stories because they sound so nuts. But there's some really strange coincidences that happen in my life that sometimes you guys tap into by accident when you start talking. It's pretty funny, actually. asked me to work out during the live chat. This is in the Facebook group. I can't remember who it was. I think he's a friend with Garrison by. He's a really nice guy, but I can't remember the name offhand, so forgive me for that. So if you're here, give me a shot. Talk, talk, tell me. Tell me you're here. <laughs> Sam, I haven't cut my hair for 11 years. I almost achieved godhood with my epic hair powers. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> It's nice to hear there, Samuel. <laughs> 44 people are here watching you grunt and pump. Really what we're doing, we're hanging out at the gym. That's really what we're doing. And this is what happens in between sets and in between conversations, right? So what are we really here for? The working out or the conversation? Who knows, right? Yeah, Devin, let's hear the story. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I have, to, I have to work with the audience that I have. So I have to understand who I'm dealing with here before I can tell different things. <laughs> different stories but like I said there was uh, some really strange 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 meditative meditation experiences I had with uh, with the Thor energy that uh, that resonates with what you're saying just so you know so it's 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 hard for me to imagine uh, not imagine but but put into a language that people will understand so it doesn't seem like psychosis or anything because it wasn't like that it's like when you work with energy, a certain energy, like, like a lot of times people in North America, I'm going to just briefly talk about this because this is relevant for some of you guys because you guys are all truth seekers. I can see that most of you are like seeking truth. Like what is true for me in this moment with my body, right? So there's also a truth. What is true for me with the experiences I'm having in my feelings, right? What feeling is imposed from past experience? What feeling is true for this moment? Like, uh, and then also my mental noise or your mental noise, you're saying, what is true information? What is information that's just circulating in there that's been programmed into me? What is the truth in this? What is just stuff that was in media, stuff that I saw, stuff that I read, stuff that people told me? But what's really the truth in that? You guys are all truth seekers. You actually are all on the spiritual path in a deep way. Beyond religion, beyond everything, you're actually all seeking truth, right? So there are different exercises, just like in the gym, to hone your truth-seeking uh, ability or your truth muscles. Like in the gym, you go in the gym and you do bench press to get stronger chest or, or shoulders or whatever. And, or you can do flies or you can do inclines. There's different exercises to achieve the same end. And each person will have a different constitution and will find that some exercises will work better than others for them. So it's also the same with spiritual exercises. 
Some use breathing techniques, some use meditation, some use mantra. Now mantra, there is mantra, which is sound. Some people just learn how to play the guitar and they're like, wow, I feel so spiritual when I play the guitar. I, I follow the sound waves because sound just is. It's just an energy that just is, and you just are with it. There's no idealism. There's no fanaticism. There's no story around it. There's just an experience that's there, right? Now, if you chant certain mantras, there'll be certain experiences within yourself that you will find and certain truths that you'll discover about yourself. And one mantra that I chanted for a long period of time was the Mercury mantra, which helps you connect to your own divinity and the source of where you came from. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, but... If you want, chant the Mercury Mantra. It's on my other channel, Jason J. Gallant, and you may have some pretty interesting experiences in a few months. So, yeah. Uh, Selwood, what's your favorite kind of beer? I don't drink beer. Although I don't mind the taste, but I don't drink beer. I don't drink any alcohol or anything. Yeah. Hey, Shane. How you doing, brother? What's the weather like? I showed it in the beginning of this video, although you can't see that right now, I don't think. I don't know if you can scroll in the beginning or not. But it's totally snow, a lot of snow outside right now. Put a foot of snow. It's not snowing in this moment. It was kind of sunny, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm very shallow. I know everything. Well, that's good. I mean, it's good to have somebody that knows everything around here. Um, Eduardo, yeah, there's a lot of fashion, trivia, and trends, and weights, and arts, and general, spiritual, or physical. Got to resonate properly. So see if we can get 100 push-ups before this live chat is over. Nice. I'm 60. Nice, Richard. <laughs> uh, Daniel Burks, I know this is a bodybuilding stream, but I can't wait for a new album. You know what? And I just talked about that earlier about how I feel a little bad because I haven't finished this last song that I want to put on the album. It's the one you've heard with the guitar in it, that, that one. Uh, the knees down, it's called. And I haven't finished all the bridges. There's a couple parts of melodies that I want to finish it, and then I want to uh, – to master it properly in my own limited capability as well. And then I'll have it up there. So it should be up soon. Any any week now it's going to be up. It should have been up already, but I just get sidetracked when I'm trying to do a lot of videos and stuff, and I just get sidetracked doing that. Sometimes it's my creative energy is just gone, so I need to wait for a day to do that. Yeah. Rest Cosmo, I'm the only live stream of a person working out. I think there is a couple other people that live stream it once in a while. Do you think you'll ever stop lifting weights or lose interest? Karen Jones. I think I've already lost interest in lifting weights uh, in a lot of ways. I do it because it's like, it's like just taking care of my health, but I definitely don't have the same goals or reasons why I do it. It's a totally different reason now. I like the pump and I like the stretch and I like the feeling, but sometimes the body's like resisting it. Sometimes it's like it's tight or it has pain or something. It's just not feeling right. I'm like, well, shit, I got to work around this, you know? So it's always like a gymnastics. It's almost like doing yoga. I'm kind of constantly trying to compensate for where I am in my life. Uh, my previous injuries, my age, whatever. And then I'm trying to work around that all the time. But because of this, because of this spiritual weather or whatever that comes at me, I have to uh, change my goals and ideas based on that. I have to basically change. Uh, I can't have goals that are just absolute and concrete, right? And say, okay, this is what I'm going to do because sometimes life changes. Sometimes different energies come in or different experiences the body comes in. Sometimes the body says, okay, I'm all about that goal. And the next minute it says, no, I don't want to do it. So I, I work with that as the truth. I don't work with my goal being more important because otherwise you just keep running into a wall and injure yourself or hurt yourself, right? Richard Parker, you did 100 push-ups? Nice. Atta boy. How long did it take you to make good money off YouTube and selling your products? I'm still waiting for that there, Selwood. I'm not really making good money off YouTube right now. I'm actually... Uh, thousands and thousands of dollars in debt from a video equipment and everything like that. Uh, so I've, I've not gotten my investment back. So I'm not at the area where I have a large enough audience to really say to you that I have an income that is supporting my channel as much. This is kind of like a slash service for society slash trying to make it sustainable through patron and selling products and services here and there. Uh, but I would not say that it's a sustainable endeavor at this point. Okay, one more. It's another set here.
<laughs> Sorry, I should have dipped the screen now so you can see that. Sorry about that, guys. That was kind of rude. Uh, okay. Yeah, the Mercury Mantra there, Devin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, take a look at that. Uh, Selwood, 1989. I have never joined anyone. I don't know what you mean by that. Can you elaborate what you mean by that? You've never joined anyone. I, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, dumbbell skull crushers on an incline are awesome, Kieran. I love them too. I just go back and forth from flat to incline. Mr. D, how you doing, brother? Nice to see you from Florida there. I know who you are. Uh, hey, Mr. G, we just got home. Hope you're doing good tonight. We went out to eat. Most everything was against my bodybuilding diet. Of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> Only the phonies seem to do well on bodybuilding channels. Well, you know, maybe, but I think there's something to do with age too. I think that the young 20 year old uh, ego driven kind of guys, like, cause we're all at that stage of that partner in life. A lot of times they want a mentor that's around their same age that's showing them success. So that way it looks more believable that they could achieve it or something. So I think there's definitely a crossover that way. Not to mention that the average person that coming out of high school or college has like thousands of people already that are following them and they have more of a social network. So it's easier to get something really going. Uh, so these are all factors, uh, but ultimately, um, stuff that's ego driven is going to be more, uh, attractive, you know? So if I was guaranteed 250 pounds at 4% body fat and, you know, lifting 500 pounds for sets of 20 on the bench or something like that, that would be way more attractive to this type of market. So yeah, it'd be easier to get out there. So that's why I have to be stupid on the channel and do different things, make my own music. And so the people that do get what I'm doing, they really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, in the end, it's all about relationships anyway. So. Yeah, the turtle wins the race. You know what I'm saying? It's not about uh, who's most popular. Sorry, I'm just going to. I've never joined anyone's Patreon, but I've really enjoyed your channel and would like to join. How does it work? How much is it to join? I would like to help you out. So would, uh, all you do is just go to, uh, there's a link down below here, uh, this video or any of the other videos, and there's a link to Patreon and it's under Natural Galant Bodybuilding. Just go to patreon.com and then find Natural Galant Bodybuilding or just use the link down below. And you could join for $1 a month, which, you know, I get like 75 cents a month for that or whatever. Or you could do $5 or $20 or $50. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. And at the odd time, I'll do a voice vlog on there, um, like a, almost like a podcast for people, kind of like talking about some training or something like that. And uh, that's for people that pay, I believe, the third tier and above. So, yeah, that's that's what you can do. That's something you can do. Yeah, but I appreciate it. Whatever you can contribute is great. If you can't, that's no problem either. I'm still here anyway, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Uh, GL, you should clickbait use clickbait titles or talk about other famous YouTubers to get more views to pay off your debt. It doesn't have to be negative opinions. Yeah, I know what you're saying, GL, but honestly, inevitably, if I start talking about somebody, I got to be truthful about what I believe and what I don't believe about what they're doing and what they say. And in order for me to be truthful about this, it's going to be deemed insulting in some way, shape, or form. And the truth is, is that there's a lot of. Uh, not only am I giving free promotion to these channels by doing so, at the same time. You also get an overwhelming amount of negativity and um, fallout from saying anything that's even true. So I just don't get into the whole gossip thing. I understand that it's 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 an easier path to grow a video, grow videos and channels and stuff, but I just don't want to buy into that. And ultimately, just it's just too much negative energy, honestly. It's just negative energy. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because, like, like, for instance, I made a video about a guy who's not natural years ago, and I was getting a lot of subscribers per month from it. And I said, this guy's not natural. He's bench pressing at 4% body fat, 500 pounds for reps on the bench, all veined up and everything. There's, there's, the guy's not natural. I know he's not natural. And I, I said it in the most nicest possible way. But I got so much of a backlash from this guy's subscribers. And then, of course, years later, he comes out and says he's not natural anyway. You know, it's like he, he tells everybody. But I'm like, man, I was already saying this. I mean, this guy's like on another level. I mean, he makes me look like a dwarf, uh, you know, a dwarf anorexic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like... So it wasn't absurd for me to say the things I was saying. I just saw the truth, but just the amount of negativity just wasn't worth it. You know, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah.
Hey, David. Oh, hey, how you doing? No, uh, Kung Fu Kickboxer. It wasn't CT. It was somebody else. But anyway, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Just ate <laughs> Matthew Shank. Uh, just ate two, stank, uh, two, two steaks and hopefully I'll wake up with 60 inch chest. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube seems to boost gossip videos, and uh, I get it because people, again, it's a, uh, let's just say this. If you talk to a person who's like, say they're addicted to heroin, and you say, hey, you, you, heroin is bad for you, there's going to be a conflict. So even though you're saying something that's probably beneficial for the person, they're gonna reject it, resist it, hate you for it, whatever, defend in whatever way they can. Um, so sometimes you have to pick your battles and realize that if you say something, is, is it really gonna lead to anything better for everybody involved or is it just gonna cause more problems? And so, yeah, I just basically pick my content based on how to serve you guys for the most part. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, it can be through arguments because I'm basically cutting through the bullshit that is, uh, some people are saying about this training technique doesn't work or Jason's doing this stupid or whatever. The reason why is because I'm saying, hey, no, this technique does work and I'm trying to educate you on it and then show you the ludicrous nature of this other person's comment through stupid comment Saturday and stuff, that's what I'm doing. But I'm not doing it blatantly to attack or to gain following. I'm doing it to, to constantly remind you of what is true and to recenter you back to that. So yeah, I, I just can't get involved in the whole gossip game as much as it probably, hundred percent. If I, there's like 10 channels I could have just shredded. I mean, 10, I, I, at least 10. And, but I didn't because I just didn't want the negative you know, negative sort of press, you could say. But at the same time, it would have led to a lot more subscribers, 100%. Uh, what do you think about critiquing body blows physique as a video, not as hate, but someone you feel looks great? Uh, I, don't, I don't really critique too much of the IFBB stuff either, right? I stopped, um, I, don't, I don't really watch it too much, so that's why I don't really, I don't really do that. Because I don't want to promote, I'm not trying to promote the sport from the IFBB non-drug tested side of things. I don't believe in the sport. Uh, I, I, I still will watch, like I still enjoy muscle and stuff, but I'm trying not to promote that lifestyle because the problem is because it's so glorified, you're getting all these people poison themselves just so that they can step on stage and then die of some sort of kidney disease or some sort of heart attack later on. Like, so I, I find it's almost like irresponsible for me to promote that because I don't believe in it. So that's why I don't promote it. Yeah, yeah, drama, I'll rent. The more negative you are on YouTube, the higher they push your, your drama. They're kind of funny on YouTube. That's the funny thing about it. They talk about, they don't want bullying, they don't want this, and they're, they're all about this different policy and stuff. And I, and I get that to a point, but I do like free speech. And I think people should be free to express themselves because we're living in a world without free speech. What kind of world is that? We're living in a totalitarian government at that point, right? So I do believe people should be able to express themselves. But, but YouTube talks about how they don't want to promote that stuff. But at the same time, whenever somebody's saying negative about somebody else, or, you know, some people saying blatant lies about me and my channel and what I'm doing, and they're getting all these views and stuff, uh, but they're basically just attacking every YouTuber. And that's, that's the platform on which they grew. But are they really developing credibility or are they just basically entertaining people, but nobody really takes them seriously, kind of like a clown at the circus, right? So that's the other thing. I mean, if, if somebody talks to you, you, you could have 100,000 followers, but they all think you're a joke that's not necessarily good branding to tell you the truth. And when you're just slandering people for the sake of trying to make yourself feel better, I mean, that's definitely not a good platform to build from. Now I'm not saying I'd be doing that, but I might get categorized into the same category with these other people that are doing the same thing. And then people would misunderstand my motive as opposed to this motive. So I just don't even go there really. It's just, a, it's just not, not good use of my energy, right? Yeah, GL, too bad Canada doesn't have free speech. You know, to a point, it doesn't. It's actually to a point. It's to, it's it's really a valid statement. Canada, even the states, like there's a lot of this left stuff agenda going on that's just like crazy. Like, like it's like, oh, it's it's racist to say to somebody that believes that they should kill everybody that doesn't believe the way they do, and you say, hey, that's not a good belief system. They're like, oh, you're a racist. I'm like, no, but that's the person who wants to kill everybody. Like, how in the hell can that be right? You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't get it honestly. I don't I don't get it. I think a lot of people are kind of sick of it, to tell you the truth, and it's, it's coming to an end at some point, guaranteed. Thanks there, Mr. D, for the two bucks. Thanks, buddy.
Mr. D, moving meditations versus bodybuilding. Yeah. Well, bodybuilding and moving meditation is almost the same thing, I guess, depending on where you're coming from. If you're uh, lifting weights based on ego and you always have this vision, this vision, you know, this vision that's always promoted, I have this vision. i got to look like this, this vision. Yeah, that's how meditation starts. A low-level kindergarten or preschool size of meditation starts with visualization. That's actually the beginning stage of meditation. It's actually just glorified concentration, honestly. That's what that is. But it's not really meditation. Real meditation is when there's no you and there's just something happening, but there's no you anymore. That's real meditation. And that is the challenge. And that brings a whole other level of supernatural experiences. But it's the dissolution of you, the I, the idea of you. When all that disappears, but then action is still taking place, that's when meditation and movement is possible. All right, let's do some overhead stuff here. So I'm just gonna see what I do here. I'll just move this chair properly here. So I'm gonna smash my computer on the ground. Hey, Devin, just watch my other channel. You'll, you'll get all the answers to your questions at some point. Just watch those videos. I flexed my biceps in the gym the other day and heard someone say mountains. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> good. That's good. Hey, Jason, make more workout vlog videos. You know what? I, I would make more workout vlog videos, but the problem is, is that I find that uh, – the problem is, is that I, I get people that don't really watch them, like – I put them up and I get about half the views or 60% of the views. So views are important in YouTube, right? So when you don't get as much views, then you're thinking, okay, well, then people don't want this. So that's why I'm not doing it. So that's the thing. If I get a lot of people requesting workout vlogs, then I'll do more. But there are a lot more work because I'm doing a lot of clips, a lot of cuts. I'm doing a voiceover, all this stuff. And I'm not necessarily getting the reward for the extra work. So I have to go with what people want. Uh, Truth Seeker, um, thanks so much for your channel, Jason. Shane Muscle and all the joints. Love it, bro. You have a t-shirt with that? Are you new here, man? Are you new here? You haven't seen me with t-shirt on? <laughs> like, just click down the link uh, on Natural Glam Bodybuilding, my website, and then go to merchandise and t-shirts and workout clothing. Just click on there. You'll see I have all these different logos and stuff, t-shirts, mugs, stickers, uh, tank tops, you know, <laughs> this stuff. Train the muscles, not the joints on there too. Different mountain symbols, all this stuff. So I have all that stuff available there. That's cool. Yeah, you have it all there. Uh, four banger love. Uh, was there ever a time in your life when you debated using testosterone? When I was in my early 20s, 19, 20 years old, and I saw all these guys getting results, and they were just like looking like massively lean and huge within months. And I was like, I had already been training for six years, and, and they were just passing me within just a few months. And I was like pretty frustrated at that age because I was so identified with being a bodybuilder and this and that. And then I had a lower back injury from hurting in my back. And the people were telling me that, oh, you know, different types of testosterone might heal your back and all this kind of stuff. So I talked to my father. And I said, does this make sense to him? And then he told me all the horror stories he saw with powerlifting and guys experimenting with drugs and stuff. And then I read like in magazines, guys that had to have a, like they had to shit in a bag in their waist because they wrecked some of their organs or the colon or this, that. And I was like, you know what? No, thanks. No matter what, taking drugs is not worth the risk. And I wasn't going to take it. So I always said to myself, I'd rather be able to train when I'm 70 as opposed to just look good for five years and then be in a wheelchair or something like, you know what I mean? I just, I just knew that I like training too much to be able to take a risk with my health. I just didn't want to. Health is just way too, way too fragile. Yeah. Okay, winner near a truth seeker. Damn, your name reminds me of someone 
who famously called even Alan Thrall isn't natural. I don't even know what you're saying there. Yeah, JKRZ, you're right. The juice giveth and the juice taketh for sure. I knew lots of guys that look like they're like, you know, I'm exaggerating, but Mr. Olympia, they look like unbelievable. All the girls and everybody looking at him like, wow, this guy's huge. He's the guy to go to if you want workout advice. You know, the guy's been training for a year, but just like, just huge, whatever. And then, uh, and then months later, just shrunk right up, having to deal with all the other side effects and all the other stuff that's going on and just in his depression and all the rest of the stuff that was going on with the hormone problems. So yeah, no, it's not worth it. Mm. Owen Chase Science Channel, uh, TRT is not much of a risk. I've been on it. Okay, he's saying he's been on it for years. You know, the thing is, is that anytime you mess around with any sort of hormone replacement, there is a certain risk, although it might not be immediately apparent now. Yeah, sometimes there's a, there's a thing, but I don't believe in doing it. I don't believe in, in it at all. I don't believe in trying it. I don't believe in, even if my testosterone was the same as an eight-year-old girl, I would not do it because I believe that if there's some other issue that I need to take care of energetically, or nutritional wise that is causing the problem and that's what i would be looking at first rather than uh putting hormones in my system No, Stan Cormier, you're right. Jeopardizing health is not worth any cost, no. Like I said, there's a lot of people that just want to justify taking a pill for something. And I mean, whatever. Sometimes you might have a health condition. Maybe you got both your nuts removed. Like, I don't know, something like that. Okay, I get it, fine. But under most conditions, I would say it's last case, worst case scenario, that's when you would do something like that. But otherwise, you know, there's there's lots of guys who say, oh, I just wish I had a little bit more energy and that's why they're doing it. Or I wish I had better ab veins or I'm just having a little bit of trouble losing a little bit of ab fat. And then that's where they go to, and they're not necessarily looking for deeper issues that might be happening in the body. The reason why the body's putting on the ab fat or doing something, there might be a reason, and it might be important. So I don't believe in uh, uh, fast tracking or short, or taking a, let me see here, what, what's the right word for it? I don't believe in sidestepping the system intelligence. That's, that's what I mean. So you notice I'm not using weights that are, Super heavy, right? So if I'm gonna do these above the head, I'm gonna use a weight that I can do at least 20 or 30 reps, 40 reps. Yeah, Matthew Shank. And I've had lots of people that have come to me over the years that have said, geez, I wish I did what you did because their body was just a mess by the time they're done. Yeah, Rick Nash, who cares about Joe Rogan? Why would I give a shit what he does? Fuck. <laughs> so what what he does? I don't. So what am I supposed to do? We all worship at the altar of Joe Rogan? Is that what you're saying? Is that like because he does it, I'm supposed to? I don't know. Okay. This is the other thing. People like, I'm not saying anything positive or negative here about him, but I'm just saying like, just because somebody has a social media following doesn't mean that they have ultimate authority and understanding everything that's going on in the human body, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, well, yeah, well you know, Rick Nash, you're, you're free to have anybody's your hero. I'm not saying that, I mean, and uh, some people are very funny and personal and whatever, but just because somebody knows something about something doesn't mean they know something about everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I might know a lot about bodybuilding or lifting weights, but it doesn't mean I know shit about changing the tire on your car and the transmission and all the rest of it. You know what I'm saying? So this is where people make mistakes. They try to uh, take people in one area and say they're an expert in this area. That means they're an expert there. It's not always the case. You know what I'm saying? The rest calls me Jason Gallant and my hero. It's funny. Uh. Okay, what else is on here? What else is on here? Uh. 
You know, I, I think that people just underestimate the side effect of, like, say I take a pool of water and then say that pool is a delicate ecosystem. Now, now let's look at the environment, okay? Sometimes there's certain areas that are delicate ecosystems. Now, sometimes if we put something into that ecosystem, it disrupts the delicate balance that's in that ecosystem that was sustainable already. It was already surviving. It was already thriving in its own way. And sometimes it's impossible to understand the side effect that will happen seven years after introducing that new substance into that system because we wanted the color of the pond to be different or because we didn't want as many mosquitoes. We wanted this and that. And we're seeing some of the problems with that type of thinking. It's like the God complex of controlling physicality. And so I'm just saying that it's not always bad, but there are always unforeseen side effects or issues that happen once you start messing with the ecosystem that is self-regulating. And the body is a self-regulating system. So this is why endocrinologists, if you talk to an endocrinologist, I trained one. And he's like, it's weirdly complicated. He says, even I can't predict what's going to go on. This is an endocrinologist. This was a, a medical doctor that's talking about how hormones work. That was his entire PhD was on that. And he was saying he didn't know how it all worked and what, you know, the, the different contraindications that could happen and stuff like that. So I find there's a lot of people that think they got it figured out. And it's almost like they're messing with the Ark of the Covenant, like an in Indiana Jones, and they just haven't got burned to dust yet. But th their time is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not always... Is being a scientist and a person that's the first person to throw the kite up in the sky and wait for a lightning bolt to prove that electricity exists. Not everybody got out of that experiment without getting electrified. There was somebody else that did the experiment and actually died, you know, or got electrocuted. You know what I'm saying? So not everybody is free from the repercussions of those types of experiments. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, I'd rather just avoid those experiments altogether and just find the deeper level of wisdom in the body and see what it's trying to tell me in that moment. And yeah, sometimes I'm wrong about what it's telling me, but that's my learning. That's my growth and wisdom, right? Here's the, here's the other thing I will say, okay? This is another thing, because then somebody says, oh, well, you know, I've used this one substance because I had a health condition or because there was something going on. And I'll say, here's the, here's the disclaimer amongst all of this. I believe that sometimes people could use a substance to re-regulate a system so that it frees them from needing that substance again. So that way they never have to touch that substance ever again. That is the only kind of disclaimer where I'd say, okay, I can understand where somebody would be coming from in that area, right? The, the substance itself frees them from addiction to that substance. That's a totally different thing than somebody saying, I gotta take this, and then the next day, I gotta take this, the next day, I gotta take this, and then you're, they're stuck in this loop of constantly uh, uh, dependency, do you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what I'm saying, is that developing a dependency is also a problem. And if it's something else that now you have to take and you have to depend on, that could be an issue, right? Do I have great hair for a guy my age? Do you take something to maintain it or is it just genetics? I don't really have great hair, honestly. I have a hairline. My dad, I got my dad's hairline. Well, it was more like my grandpa's hairline, but I've been messing around with some uh, rolling lately. We'll see what happens. Derma rolling. I'll, I'll tell you guys what, I'll do a video one of these days because it seems like guys seem to be interested in that. Um, but, but it's more like acupuncture for the head. Like, you know, putting holes in it, you're kind of aerating a lawn. So it's, it's almost like it feels kind of good. It kind of stimulates the scalp and I think it helps with blood flow and circulation. So I've been, I've been doing that a bit and not tying my hair up so much because I think that's was breaking up the hair and causing problems. But otherwise, uh, yeah, well, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Would you ever take weights to the mountain for a workout vid? Uh, probably never, no. Uh, unless, of course, I was doing just a light dumbbells. But the problem is you're up the logging road and bouncing and everything. And because you're bouncing so much, I can't imagine the damage that could be done <laughs> to, the, to the truck or whatever on the way up. So... But yeah, it's not, that's an idea. I don't know if people are interested. Hmm. Oh, somebody's asking Zeppelin or Black Sabbath. I never really listened to a lot of Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin, although, you know, everybody heard Led Zeppelin and some Black Sabbath stuff. 
I mean, it's, there was some okay stuff, but I never really got into it. But I, I might start listening a little bit again, see if there's something in there that resonates with me. <laughs> Would you ever ride a, shirt, a horse with your shirt off? <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, that's funny. Pantera, rest Cosmos Lakes Pantera, yeah. <laughs> All Jason's weights would crush the mountain and damage the ecosystem. Yes, it would be very damaging, yes. The delicate system of the, of the mountain would be totally disrupted from the boulders. You know what, that would be great. Imagine if we could all like join in one body and become like uh, one of those massive transformer, like ultra bots or whatever, like Voltron or something, like, you know, 75 people and the power and everything all together in one massive mountainous being that could just lift mountains and buildings and, and do all that stomp on trolls and whatever. That'd be pretty crazy. Eh? That'd be kind of a neat superpower. <laughs> it's like Galantians combine, right? <laughs> Everybody becomes one massive robot. That'd be hilarious. That'd be pretty funny. Led Zeppelin or whatever playing in the background as we're stomping through the mountains. <laughs> Some sort of epic sort of like Shrek movie, like with the gumdrop man or whatever when he became huge. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Any of you guys read any novels? <sighs> Get that dead now. Try to see dead. All right, see you, GL. Have a good one, buddy. You like anime, Zorak? Nice. Okay. Do you make all your own music for your videos? Yes, I do. And what got you interested in creating music? I'm interested in your setup. I got interested in creating music because I needed to, because YouTube would copyright strike me. In the beginning, I didn't realize what, uh, how YouTube worked really. And I'd use some music that I liked or just had the radio playing in the background and all of a sudden my video would get banned or blocked out or whatever. Uh, so I was like, okay, I gotta create my own music. And of course I was horrible at it. And I started messing around GarageBand and then I started to play around a little bit and uh, watch tutorials and stuff. So now I, I make all my stuff on Logic Pro 10, but there's so much I don't know and so much I can get better at. And uh, this guy, Sonny, that made my intro, uh, he's supposedly a musical engineer. So he could probably teach me a lot of stuff, but he probably couldn't be bothered to go through the motions. But, but yeah, I, I definitely would like to learn more. But at the same time, I find that uh, because I'm so busy doing video and constantly turning out content, it's hard for me to have a lot of time to, to learn more. Uh, because sometimes I don't feel like learning. Sometimes I'd rather just read a book or or do my other stuff that I have to do with work and stuff. So anyway, um, just I, let, I sometimes I let things just happen naturally too. Where sometimes you just make these leaps of logic, or you, I just watch little tutorials here and there. I just ingest it, and sometimes even if I don't get it 100% right then and there, then I uh, over time it'll just kind of percolate to the surface, like through osmosis, and I'll know something more the next time I make a next song, right? Because I've noticed my songs have gotten better. I'm liking my songs more so, or they're getting more consistently good from my own feeling. Like I feel good about them. So that's 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 always a sign of evolution, right? Alexander Stevens, you like autobiographies? Nice, nice. Oh, oh, Eduardo, you're you're just starting the similar uh, Cimmerillion for Lord of the Rings. Okay, I, yeah, I don't watch. I don't. I love reading fantasy, but I don't know if the Cimmerillion would be something that I'd be interested in. It seems like a lot of backstory type stuff, right? So, Kung Fu Kickboxer just written your first novel, publishing on Amazon very soon. I have a book published on Amazon that is a fantasy book called King of Dragons. So, if you guys want to check out a book that I wrote years ago, I wrote six novels, and one of them was that. And uh, other ones I didn't finish, but I had 140,000 words for each novel and stuff. And the average novel is around 100,000, 80 to 100,000 words. But that was what I really wanted to do at one point. So, uh, but Kung Fu Kickboxer, yeah, make sure you let me know when you when you do that. Just send me a, a bit, um, an email when you have it up. What, what, what's it about? Is it like a fantasy novel or is it, what is it? True seeker, if I consider competing again, probably be a beast for your age group. Yeah, I'm sure I'd be pretty good in my age group for sure, 100%. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't see the point right now. Just, but you never know. 
you never know in the future. World of Warcraft lore is awesome. Oh, that that is it a book or something? Oh, vampire. Okay, I like fantasy stuff. Anything to do with urban fantasy, fantasy. I, I read that stuff. Um, but yeah, like a friend of mine actually is a published author. Uh, his his name is Sean Slater, and he writes uh, crime fiction. And he's a published author through uh, Agent New York and, and stuff like that. It's not self published. He actually got an agent. He's, he's really really good writer. Like anybody can self publish. You know, so sometimes you can publish a shitty book or a good book, whatever, right? But in order to get an agent and to be on a seller list and get you know, hundred fifty thousand dollar contract for a two book deal or whatever. You got to be really good, so um, or at least really good in, uh, to the opinion of the agent and the editors. So yeah, that's that's what he did. He he's actually uh, a published author and he's he's writing another book right now. He's got four out now. He's got another one in the series or something. Would I go back to writing novels again? I've been considering it. It's just that I'm so busy with this workflow with video, but I've actually really been considering. Uh, writing the first novel that I ever wrote, but rewriting it in a different story arc and stuff. I've been really considering doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher Lenz, uh, science fiction is your favorite. You love uh, Salinger. I've never read Salinger, but the hard part about science fiction is that it's so sciencey. You've got to be so accurate with all the details. So sometimes it limits you. Uh, whereas with fantasy, you can make up the rules of that universe and say, okay, this is the rules. And therefore that's the thing that hang or hinges all the, um, powers and, and magic and ooh, whatever it is that, that these are the rules of the society like you can make that all up where in science fiction sometimes it's a little bit like no this is the way it is you know if the gravitational pull is like this before you go into the atmosphere or planet or whatever like it has to be that way and if you make any mistake the science fiction people will tear you apart right so that's the only challenge of writing science fiction you got to be really sciencey on that one for banger love I, i've got 18 inch arms they're about 18 to 18 and a quarter with a pump Okay, so around there. What would you say is a normal rate of growth for a natty? I, I guess if a person's like, I don't know, a 5'10", 150 pound, 160 pound natty, they'd probably put on four or five pounds a year for the first couple of years and maybe, and then from there, it's about two or three pounds a year of real lean muscle mass. How old were you in that mag shot? Uh, there's a number of different magazines I was in, Zorak. I wasn't just in one mag, so... Um, I don't know how to answer that. Richard Parker, your wife wrote a the book called The Truth About Nursing Nice. I will not erase you for spamming me and advertising your book. No. <laughs> uh, could you survive off the grid on the mountain? Uh, I couldn't because I don't have any skills of hunting, trapping. Uh, yeah, I don't have the skills for that. Um, but yeah, that would be a good skill set to have for sure. I can barely survive outside my truck. I mean, honestly, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have the skills for that. Let's hope I never need them. Yeah. The one on my profile, uh, the one in my profile pic right now is not a magazine photo. That's just me a couple of years ago. The, the picture in my profile pic on YouTube here, that's, that's just from a couple of years ago in the gym. Just lean down a little bit, that's it, yeah. The tanned one, which, which profile pic are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, like on Instagram? Which, which one are you talking about? Okay, Vincent says, what are the benefits of high rep ranges, 15 plus reps, and as opposed to anything lower? Well, the benefits there are you're hitting different muscle fibers and you're pumping blood in that area and you're basically accessing uh, fast switch uh, fibers with a low weight, but with the high weight and high reps, or I mean, sorry, with the high weight and low reps, you're getting fast switch fibers. With the low weight and high reps, you're getting more of the endurance fibers. So through working both, you get a more overall muscular effect, right? There you go, flex there, there you go. <laughs> How big do you think you could get if you took drugs? Well, I'm positive I would have been on a, a national level, if not professional IFBB level, Olympia type stage. That's where I would have been, 100%. I would have been at least 240, 250 on stage, at least 230 anyway, 
Uh, I know that. I would have been at least 2.30 on stage, somewhere around there. If I was not natural, but I'd probably be dead in the process. So what's the point of that, right? Kung Fu Kickboxer, he goes, I want to believe in Bigfoot, but surely someone could have trapped one in a beer trap or similar. Uh, again, there's a, there's a lot of different philosophies on this. Uh, some are the government already knows about them. Some people say that they're an experiment gone wrong. Other people say that they're so strong that they can rip tree branch or trees right out of the ground with one arm. And they're so strong you can't trap them in some sort of simple trap. Like it's, it's, it's not that easy. Uh, other people say that, well, and, and I know the brush is so dense that in order for you to follow one, you, you just can't as a human being, you just can't move fast enough through the woods because all the lore around Sasquatch or Bigfoot say that they're so fast and they can move so fast. It's impossible for a human to catch up with them. So um, also the other thing is people are assuming they have the intelligence level of an animal where we don't even know their intelligence level must be, might be much higher than that. So I don't know. I'm open to a lot of possibilities, but I do know how hard it is just to move through the woods where I live. It's impossible without stumbling down or breaking a knee or an ankle or something like that to even move through some of these areas where I film. Uh, I can only move through them because on the main road, but if I go off, it's like a cliff here, a cliff there, uh, deadfall, all of a sudden my legs falling down between two trees. Like it's brutal. It's brutal to move. So I can really see how it would be hard in assuming you know, 90 something percent of the territory in North America has not even been explored on foot. I could see how it'd be very easy for some creature to, to hide if it had a really high level of intelligence, right? So, yeah. Okay, Zorak, you're killing me here. Okay, let me see here. Okay, you're talking about, you're talking about my profile pic on my YouTube channel, right? So you're saying YouTube. And I keep telling you, this picture, uh, YouTube, my channel picture of YouTube is only been, it only was taken two years ago in, inside the gym. No, Richard Parker, I was just busting your chops there. Don't worry about that, uh, about mentioning a book. That's, that's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, no, I, you've only sold seven books in the last five years, but hey, it's something. No, I know it's, it's a challenge to be an author. The thing is, to be an author, it's, it's kind of like what I'm doing here. You have to have a certain following of people that like what you're doing, whether you're doing a podcast, whether you're doing story time, whether you're making movies, whether you're helping people. Maybe if your wife was doing a nursing video channel or something like that or a podcast helping people with nursing, then from there she'd say, hey, buy my book, you know, Truth About Nursing, and then that's how she could promote it. But if you just put a book up on Amazon, yeah, good luck selling it. It's, it's, it's impossible, really. Yeah, Alexander Stevens, there's also a spiritual side to the Sasquatch from what the natives say in every other continent. Yeah, there's a possibility of that. But I was reading a book on Russian lore and stuff like that, and it's very physical realities of a lot of Sasquatches, too, that they were talking about. Um, so, yeah, there's, some, there's a lot of different viewpoints, and I think we might be talking about different types of beings, the different types of mysticism and mythology and superstition, everything thrown in there. So who knows where the truth is and all of that. But uh, but yeah, I'm open. I'm open to stuff. I'm open to those a lot of things that are not in my awareness that are that are existing. That's for sure. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, thanks, Guillo uh, Navaroli. Uh, that that picture was taken in 1998. Actually, it's funny you say uh, Kung Fu Kickboxer, you might write a novel on Bigfoot. Actually, my first novel was about Bigfoot. And uh, and anyway, I'm not going to give away the idea, but but the bottom line is it was about Bigfoot and uh, and uh, a whole bunch of stuff in there. But, but that's exactly what my fantasy novel is about, urban fantasy one. The one that's on Kindle right now or Amazon is, and you guys check it out if you like to read, whatever. I don't know, you might like it. I wrote it in 2003, a long time ago, but it's uh, it's about a fantasy world invading this one and then science stops working but then magic takes over like so the laws of physics and things just change so yeah it's kind of an interesting sort of end of the world sort of thing 
Pedro Pe uh, J, is, is it possible to gain muscle with weight training and Muay Thai training? Uh, yeah, to a point, but you're going to find a point where there's, like I said, a bifurcation in the road where you have to pick one or the other, which one you're going to specialize in. If you're doing super hard cardio and your body is just always pounded with that cardio, yeah, you're not going to put on muscle. It's, you're only going to put on so much, and then it's going to be a point of diminishing return where you're weight training, but then the cardio is going to be like, your body's going to be like, i got to adapt to this, and to get bigger, it's going to make me worse at this, and this is the dominant training method that I'm using. So whatever you're training more at is what your body's going to adapt to. And I find cardio... If it's super intense, your body body will usually give that preferential treatment. Hmm. Rob Gucho Hart. Okay, you must be new here. No, I have not there, Rob Gucho. You saying, have I ever tried drugs? No, I have not. I do not believe in performance enhancing hormones of any kind. I do not use drugs. I'm a totally drug-free natural bodybuilder. Always have been, always will be. And Christopher Lenz says, Rob, 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 yeah. Yeah, we just got a new people here. Sometimes some people are new that get into the live chat, so I'm open. It's okay. I'll answer questions if they're just asking politely, you know. Um, but at the same time, um, yeah, as long as, as long as people are polite and they're just honestly asking, I can't give a shit for that. So in 1989, what do you think is the best way to deal with depression? Uh Okay, there's a lot of different ways to deal with depression, but one thing you have to understand is the way you see the world is the biggest issue. Now, assuming that you don't have some sort of physical issue that's going on, like say mercury toxicity or heavy metal toxicity or something like that, that can also bring a burden of depression into the system, okay? That can also cause a lot of um, chemical imbalances and issues and things like that. Um, the other thing a person has to do is unravel their rejection of the world through thoughts first, because these are the less dense, then there's going to be feelings or sensations, even the sensation of numbness or disconnection. That has to be accepted and be with enough. And then intimacy has to be established through meditation or through some sort of self-reflection. Then from there, there's an unraveling of that. And then there's a deeper level of awareness that comes. And guess what happens? Pain, emotional pain, lots of emotional pain. Be ready to feel that, deal with that, meditate with that, be with it. Don't judge it. And, you know, so it's a process. So depression is a process. If people are dealing with depression, there's this almost like a candy-coated shell that they've surrounded themselves with, and that needs to be reverse engineered. Uh, Harpoon7, uh, thanks, thanks a lot for the positive feedback. Um, I'm glad that I've been able to help you gain some lats and gain some biceps. It's good. <laughs> thanks, Harpoon. Christopher Lenz, working out and meds help me for depression, healthy living men. Uh, Christopher Lenz, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not against people that need medication for something for a period of time. Like, I mean, but ideally, obviously, you'd want to become free of that, right? That's that's the thing. So a lot of um, the medical institutions say, okay, if I take this, then it compensates for that because everything's a physical issue. But the truth is there's something deeper that has caused the physical issue to manifest. So eventually it would be ideal if you could, could be independent of that medicine because the meds also cause a lot of issues with people as well. So uh, there's side effects and stuff. So, but you know, again, if somebody's in danger or whatever, I understand that in emergency type situation that they need to do whatever they need to do. Um, but ultimately there is a way to find your way into deeper levels of happiness in life within, which is why the sages have always sat on mountaintops and meditated. This isn't because they're all nuts and it wasn't to do with religion. It was because they learned the mastery of inner engineering. And yes, it's a painful path, just like lifting weights. There's some pain involved, 100% pain, and then you get the results from it. There's also this process that can happen within an emotional mental level.
Uh, do they have a Tim Hortons by you? Yeah, they have Tim Hortons all over the place there, Christopher Lenz. Uh, it's not my favorite coffee or anything by any means, but sometimes it's the only thing open, so I'll do that once in a while, yeah. Yeah, Devin, uh, you know what? Look at my other channel, Devin. You're going to get a lot from my other uh, YouTube channel. Just just watch those videos and just kind of absorb and, and see what stuff resonates with you, and I think you'll get a lot out of that. And Selwood 1989, check out my other channel called Jason J. Gallant. I put up videos there that are serious. I'm not goofy there or whatever, but just basically about how to uh, maneuver your thought process into a deeper level of freedom. That's what that those videos, they're all free and they're there. Okay, so just, just absorb those, watch them just with an open mind just for a bit. There's no religion in there. There's no like, you know, I, you're good or bad. It's not like that but it's about understanding the inner mechanics of finding deeper levels of happiness. And there's different angles you can perceive your own illusions from. And by doing so, you can actually unravel this, this prison that you're in. Okay. So Jason J. Gallant on YouTube, check that out. Uh, no, I'm not drinking instant coffee. I'm drinking normal coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't, you'll get, you'll get a lot out of it. And like I said, there's no judgment here, man. It's okay. You know, the thing is that this thing is a complicated vehicle and there's a lot of shit show. I mean, we're all like in the gym trying to figure out, okay, what's the best way to do things to create a result? What's the best way to be in harmony with it? It's also the same with your mental and emotional areas. And like I said, you guys are truth seekers. We don't realize that a lot of you, you're trying to say, okay, what is the truth behind things instead of what's the idealism or dogma that people are trying to push on me? It's, so there is, there is a mechanism within you that, um, that can be mastered or at least harmonized. You can be in harmony with instead of constant resistance with. And uh, that's what a lot of these different techniques or spiritual exercises were built for. Sometimes it's just something as simple as breathing, like fire breath. You'd be surprised doing this. Do that for a minute and then just sit and breathe in deeply into the nose and out, and then look at the room and see how you feel. And you're gonna notice that there's something weird that went on, and you're like, wow, there's something turned the lights on. What the hell happened? Just something as simple as that. Hmm. Favorite kitchen gadget. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, favorite kitchen gadget? I guess, you know, favorite, I mean, I take certain things like the fridge and the stove for granted, but I guess gadget would have to be the, the coffee grinder or the blender. I guess the blender, you know, which I'm going to have to use pretty quick here because I'm getting hungry. Mm. Wow. Well, I've been on here for a long time, guys. Holy shit. For Banger Love, would you ever do a contest cut video series just for your channel or will you ever compete again? I don't know if I'll compete again there, For Banger, I don't know. Um, and But if I did, yeah, I would do a contest cut sort of prep thing on the, on the channel, I would, yeah, for sure. What's your fast twitch to slow twitch fibers ratio and, and do you know this, uh, or how, how do you know this? I would say you would, you would know it just based on how your training goes and what you seem to respond to. If you're a person that tends to get extremely sore for long periods of time from a training session and you, you find that you need to take three or four days off, then you probably are more fast switch fiber dominated as opposed to a person who recovers and then seems to flatten out really quick. They like say they train and then the next day they kind of feel okay, maybe a little bit tight, but the next day they're always healed. Then there's a possibility they have more slow twitch fibers in at least that muscle group we're talking about uh, than fast twitch. Yeah, Sam, Samuel uh, Denman. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad that my other channel helped you out. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Is Dunkin' Donuts in Canada? Do you drink it? I think Dunkin' Donuts is here, here and there, but it's not that common and not that uh, popular. I don't, I don't, so I don't ever go there, no. All right, guys. Yeah, I think, I think this is good. I think, I think, We've done some good stuff today. I think we've had a good chat, a couple good chats. I've even went so far I drained my computer off. 
And uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, well, we'll see you next Friday, but I'm going to definitely do a video tonight and it'll be up tomorrow uh, afternoon or something like that. So make sure you check that out. Uh, share my stuff. Otherwise you'll end up on the mountain. You know, the rules, you know, I'm not going to change the rules just because you're all nice to me in the chat. Even if you gave me a super chat or even gave me a donation, I still might put you up on the mountain. It might happen if you didn't share my stuff or if you don't tune into my videos and watch all of it. Don't be scrolling through parts. You know, you know the rules, right? I got to keep on telling you guys the rules, right? <laughs> So, so, uh, so yeah, no, I'm glad, sorry, I'm just reading the chats here at the same time. Um, but yeah, no, it's great talking to you guys again and stuff and, and take care of yourselves this week. And, uh, yeah, we got some good astrological weather and some good times to weight train. Be careful out there and listen to your body and stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. And I do appreciate you guys, even though I tell you to donate a super chat, it doesn't mean I don't care about you, okay? I'm just trying to make this stuff easy for me to continue to do. That's all I'm doing. So take care. Okay. Mountain.